What is infrastructure? Historically, it's been what makes the economy move. What is it that we all need to ensure that we as citizens are productive? The president said this week that infrastructure evolves to meet the American people's aspirations. And it's not static. Less than 6% of this proposal goes to roads and bridges. Democrats have decided it's the English language that has to change. They're embarking on an Orwellian campaign to convince everybody that any government policy whatsoever can be labeled infrastructure. The definition of infrastructure, a key part of this uh, first launch of the sales campaign for the next spending bill, bills, we believe, on Capitol Hill. Let's bring in our panel, former White House Press Secretary Ari Fleischer, Mara Lyason, national political correspondent of National Public Radio, and Jonah Goldberg, editor-in-chief of The Dispatch. Uh, it is, Ari, a little interesting to hear this kind of vague, amorphous definition of infrastructure. But, you know, but I do have to tell you, I think there's a little merit to what they're saying about times change, technology changes, definitions do evolve. I just think they've gone too far with how much they're trying to jam in and call infrastructure. You know, I mean, you could say grass is infrastructure because cattle eats grass and cattle gives us meat. And without meat, we wouldn't have energy and we couldn't do what we do. So grass is infrastructure. You know, you, you can take it to every length that you want. And that's my beef with what the Democrats have done here. And what Joe Biden's done, trying to jam in so much spending on the guise of infrastructure. But I do think there's some things like broadband and other elements that reflect a more modern society that can indeed be considered infrastructure. And I think Republicans would work with Democrats on that unless Democrats go too far in redefining the word, which is what they've done. Their meeting at the White House apparently went well, an hour, 40 minutes. But um, Mara, it, it, is there real prospect of Republicans getting on board with something like this? Well, I think it's possible that if you could break off some pieces of this, anything that makes the U.S. more competitive with China, universal broadband, 5G technology, manufacturing our own semiconductors instead of being dependent on China. Those things, I think both parties would say, are infrastructure, and it's possible that they could get Republican support. I think when you get into human infrastructure, which the White House defines, including universal pre-K, community college, long-term care, so that women don't have to quit their jobs outside the home to take care of an elderly parent. I think a lot of those women would say that's infrastructure. You're not going to get Republican support for that. But yes, I do think there are some things that you could get bipartisan support for. Uh, Jonah, this weekend, the Secretary of Transportation, uh, Secretary Buttigieg, ran into a bit of a rhetorical buzzsaw with Chris Wallace on Fox News Sunday on the sales job of this. Take a listen. There are a lot of different analyses about just how many million jobs this is going to create. I saw a Georgetown study. I think it said uh, an investment but, of this but, type but, will wait, wait, create wait. or save. Secretary, 10 to you're the one who the point is, decided Moody's. You're the one who millions cited millions Moody's analytics as 19 million, and it's actually yeah. 2.7 million, which is a bunch, but it's not what you said. It's part of a scenario that Moody says will create 19 million jobs. Uh, but it, the the bottom line is, it's going to add jobs, and this is a direct refutation of people who are saying otherwise. Jonah? Yeah, I, I, personally, I, I love that he has brought back this old Obama era talking point of created or saved uh, jobs because it's utterly non-falsifiable. Just so you know, th just this morning, I did or saved 500 push-ups. Um, and I think that this thing, <laughs> it, it gets to this larger problem that we have in with the Biden administration these days is it, it harkens back to that Obama era stuff. Remember where they changed terrorist states to nations of concern or, you know, these kinds of things. They, they think if they can change the words, they can change the reality. And some of this is just simply poll driven. Infrastructure tracks to mean good with a lot of Americans. So they think that if they can convince, Amer if they can convince enough Americans that X or Y or Z or grass, as Ari says, is infrastructure, then they win the debate. And I don't think it's actually going to work that way because words are not the same thing as things.
Mm -hmm. I want to turn overseas real quick to to Iran and um, and and the Israel Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu meeting with the Defense Secretary Austin, uh, talking about Iran extensively. Take a listen. There is no threat that is more serious, more dangerous, more pressing than that posed by the fanatical regime in Iran. Iran has never given up its quest for nuclear weapons. I will never allow. Iran to obtain the nuclear capability to carry out its genocidal goal of eliminating Israel. Uh, the Prime Minister going back to that again and again, I think nine times, several times uh, during that joint event. Uh, Defense Secretary Austin did mention Iran once. The administration, Ari, is trying to get back in this nuclear deal. Um, there was an incident over the weekend where the nuclear facility in Iran lost power, and it's being blamed on Israel currently. Your thoughts on this dynamic and how it's developing in U.S. policy? Well, I think it's fair to say that Israel has a history of doing two things, making peace with its adversaries, Egypt, Jordan, now UAE, Bahrain, uh, Morocco has made a peace treaty with Israel. Israel always looks to make peace with its Arab neighbors and has or it defends herself from those who present the threat. Iraq, when Iraq was developing nuclear weapons at the Osira plant. Uh, Syria, when Syria was developing a nuclear plant, Israel took it out. And now Iran, it certainly appears that Israel has taken out, or at least neutralized for a time being, Iran's ability to produce nuclear weapons down the road. So Israel takes security seriously, and any nation that is like Israel, a small nation surrounded by potentially hostile countries in the Middle East, any other nation would do the same thing as Israel does, make peace where you can, defend themselves where you must. But Mara, the dynamic between this administration as opposed to the last administration and the relationship with Israel is quite different. Yeah, very different. Uh, it took a long time before uh, Joe Biden reached out. You know, the difference about Iran is all about the JCPOA, this Iranian nuclear agreement that Donald Trump pulled the U.S. out of. Joe Biden has said he wants to get back into it, but he said that Iran has to comply with the terms of that agreement before he does. Uh, Iran isn't complying, and I think every day that that agreement is not in place is a day that Iran is closer to getting a nuclear weapon. It's a really tough problem. Jonah? Yeah, I mean, I think the other thing that has changed is that Israel is now acting on behalf, as sort of Ari indicated, of vast swaths of its neighborhood. Israel is, is, you know, aligned with a lot of these Arab regimes, overtly or covertly, because they all consider Iran to be the biggest threat to the neighborhood. And that gives them a lot more maneuvering room diplomatically and lets them be able to break with the U.S. Uh, if the U.S. doesn't seem to want to go, um, you know, on the same path that Netanyahu and the region does. Does it change, Ari, the, the negotiations with Iran on this deal? I don't think it does, because I think the Biden administration, like the Obama administration, is hell-bent on striking a deal with Iran. I don't know why. I don't know how the notion of a deal that Iran violates anyway actually preserves peace in the area. And, and it just seems to be a, almost a legacy item. They just think we need to negotiate a deal with Iran, so let's negotiate one. I don't see an upside. 